Pittsburgh Steeler fans, welcome to a very special podcast here from Behind the Steel Curtain. We have a very special guest with us that you can see down there. In the corner, we have the most eligible tackle in the NFL, one Zach. I, I, I almost said uh, home wrecking Hulk. Banner. I don't know if we should go that way or not. Zach, the home wrecker banner. Appreciate you for having me. Thank so, uh, Zach, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate you coming on. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, as you all who are on here on YouTube can see, we also have Deputy F Editor Michael Beck and Podcast Director Brian Anthony Davis joining us. As we're just going to have a nice little talk and conversation with Zach today, and and just kind of see how things are going. So, I wanted to start things off and and say this. You, you just signed a one-year deal with the Steelers. Correct. Now, apparently, you had the option to to maybe do do more than that, and you opted for the one-year deal. You want to give us a little uh, insight into that? Yeah, man. I think it's just it's one of those situations. My agent worded it, worded it in a very very powerful way. We're betting on ourselves. Um, yes. The bottom line is is like you know the Steelers organization. I appreciated the opportunity to possibly sign a couple year deal. But then when you look at it from a strategical standpoint, a strategy standpoint, um, what if I balled out this year? You know what I mean? What if? And that's, exactly. that's, that's the that's the the question in the air. And that's where it comes, like you say, we're, me and him, my, as my agent, we're, we're betting on ourselves to have a really, really good year. Um, a lot of guys get scared. You know, they think about things that you can't control, like injury and stuff like that. Um, it's not dissing that. I'm not disrespecting that. I'm not saying that's the bad route to go, but sometimes if you do that, then you set yourself up for failure later and you have regrets. So there will be zero regrets. Um, the bottom line is I do want to be here in Pittsburgh. I'm really happy that we got it figured out here in Pittsburgh. Um, and, uh, more and more opportunities are growing and, you know, are, are being given every day. So I'm really, really excited. That's great. So uh, when your career started off in Indy, did you, and well, how it ended in Indy, did you expect you'd be where you are right now? I did. Um, the reason why is because I had so many regrets. You know, when Mr. Ballard, um, the GM there, had sat me down and said, I'm not playing about your weight. Um, you need to get this down. So I don't think anybody needs tackles at this point. At this point, that's why I'm risking, you know, gambling uh, right now I'm putting you on the waiver wire, but I th I'm going to get you back here on Tuesday, sign you to the practice squad. When you get your weight right, then I'll bring you back up. He gambled and four teams bid it on me. And unfortunately you go to the team with the worst record the year before and I was with another team, you know, uh, for that year. And that was a learning, learning point. But I, I, to answer your original question, I left Indy saying never again. And um, unfortunately, during the season in Cleveland, I never really understood that, you know, I need to make sure I focus on my weight and ended up ballooning up to about 420 pounds by January. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's no doubt in my mind I shouldn't have been cut. Right. I wish they would have trusted me, you know, at the same point of uh, of the fact that I was going to lose the weight by OTAs and things like that. But I was one of the 30 guys that got released in March. Um, the bottom line is, is that was a learning point for me. Everything happens for a reason, whether you believe in something above or not. Um, so luckily, you know, it all worked out and I ended up in a way better city than all the other ones we named before. So it's, it's, it's a blessing. But if you were to ask me when I got cut, if I believed I would be here, I think that belief is the reason why I'm here. That's great. So Zach, Open competition to tackle going on right now. Mike Tomlin in his uh, conference the other day mentioned that uh, Matt Filer was going to be uh, starting out taking reps at guard. So that means it looks like it's a battle between you and Chooks for for yep. that spot. What are your thoughts on that battle? Um, to be honest with you guys, it's something that we already kind of knew. You know, it's just you got to wait for the head coach to announce it. Um of course, did he expect? Did we expect him to announce it? No. Did he put a crap load of pressure on the two of us? Yes. <laughs> but if you guys have done your research, man, you guys will know that Chuki and I—I I call him Chuki. That's my guy, um, Chooks. He'd be pissed if I called him Chuki in public, but I don't care. Uh, 
and you just we're, we're friends so it's kind of it's weird right you know being being best friends with somebody on the team that you're competing for a spot but it, in in your guys's mind maybe but in ours it's like so natural because we've been we've been doing that in so, such a sort of way last year we were both expected to be the swing tackle you know and um and to, to, to fill in for the big tight end job. And that's why when it got to the Rams week, everybody who looked into it so damn much are like, oh, Banner right not not might not be ready for tackle because uh, Chuke started, you know. No, nah, I, I think when Coach T really meant what he said, he didn't want me to – it was just a week thing, a one-week thing. He asked Chukes to step up. Um, he did step up, and he filled in really, really well at the right tackle position. And the bottom line is is – we have both had conversations to where we hope we are both on the, on the field at the same time in the future as Steelers. Um, that's not to undermine Al. That's not to undermine anybody else in the offensive line. But with somebody who's as experienced as Al, and we understand, like, at some point, retirement is coming. Not I'm not saying that this soon. I don't want you guys to, oh, is this a hint? You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, just trying to be, I'm trying to be as honest as I can with you guys. Like, we know and we hope that we're playing when Al retires. So when that happens, both of us have an opportunity to be on the field at the same time. So that's the type of positivity that we keep with this. And the bottom line is, is you no, know, whoever quote-unquote loses is going to be the jumbo tight end. So, so, so it's not like anybody's, you know what I mean, competing for a, a game check this year. We're competing for certain spots and, and how we can contribute to the team. So that's the type of positive mindset. Um, we're both competitive. We both want it, but you got to keep the room positive. You can't hate on each other. We're literally, you know, we were literally stepping out the other day together, you know, enjoying a, a, a drink and some dinner. Like we hang out almost every day. Well, that that's, that's fantastic. And we actually highlighted it last night, you know, big Al, he's the third oldest guy on the Steelers behind yeah. Bennett and, and Tyson Alalo. Yeah. So it's not like, it's oh we're ready for big al for you know for the next eight years yeah so it's just it, it's one of those things now one thing that we've that last year you were primarily in there as a run blocker i got a little bit frustrated because every time they brought you in it was almost like they were telegraphing exactly what was going yeah. to happen i'm like you know throw the ball to somebody else hit yeah. the big guy yeah. out there or you know or just try to catch him off guard a little bit but one yeah. of those things is you didn't do a lot of pass blocking last year so yeah. that's the one the biggest unknown how do you personally assess your ability to be a pass blocking tackle a lot of people watch the tape and see me move people because i do have a passion of moving people right and in the nfl i'm not gonna lie like some of that stuff you saw on tape last year of me covering up guys and moving them five yards down the field and things like that it, it, it's the first couple steps in terms of the technique getting to the block has all been taught to me since I've been with the Steelers. Um, all that technique, wow. from a technique standpoint, um, you know, my feet coming off the line ball and making sure I, I keep them a certain width so I don't get thrown off my block and things like that. Just pro tips that I've learned from both Munch when he was here and now Sweet Feet, Coach Surrett. Um, just those type of things. So to kind of get back to what I was like, slightly kind of humbly bragging about myself. I gave up three sacks in college. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if PFF says four or five. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. I gave up three <laughs> sacks in college. Pass blocking. Now, in terms of my punch and in terms of my kick and opening up, just I'm not excuse making, but I had five offensive line coaches in the, 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 the five seasons that I played there. So trying to learn the technique and all these type of things and both run and pass, I've – I've learned so much playing with this veteran group for the Steelers, you know, learning from Al, uh, learning uh, from even Matt when he was at tackle, some of the things about sets and things. He's a seven-year vet. He has so much stuff he could tell me. But to answer your question, I'm mean, really, really excited because at heart, I enjoyed pass blocking more. I just felt like run blocking was just so easy that I took pride in pass blocking, if that makes sense. So a lot of people are going to label me as road grader because of one, either their lack of knowledge of football and they're just assuming by my bio that I'm six foot nine, 340 pounds, that, that oh, he must be a mauler, he can't move, or they don't watch the film. So it's just, at the end of the day, that's on them. Zach, you had three sacks, like you mentioned, in college given up. 
So has Sam Darnold given you a part of his signing bonus uh, the for keeping him alive <laughs> he all did. those years they drafted? I'll tell you what, there is, there is, and I can think about it. Because so Sammy D was my quarterback my my senior year. Um, there was twice, uh, one against Stanford, and then I'm have to say the other one I'm I'm forgetting it might be the Rose Bowl against Penn State. There is one. There's there's two plays where he saved it from being four and five. I'll tell you that right now, just from being mobile <laughs> and 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 the quarterback, you know, the pocket awareness and everything that he has. Um, people don't understand like when I tell like. And, and he has to obviously live it out, and he knows that. But there should be no reason why that man shouldn't be the next Aaron Rodgers in the NFL. I, I, I truly mean that. Someone who's both mobile in his own unique way, swaggy. Um, everybody loves to play with him and just that type of leader. I, I really wish, and I, and he knows this, but I really wish him luck and success over this road. Now, uh, another quarterback that you've uh, blocked in front of is one Devlin Hodges. Uh, just curious, because there's, there's a little bit of banter going on online. Uh, what's your relationship with Duck like? I think you guys get it. You, <laughs> you, 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 you titled it a really awesome, unique way. It's banter. It's, it's, it, it's, I'll tell you what, at least it's not scripted. It's not like I'm texting them like, hey, I'm about to send this tweet. Everything you see is absolutely like, on the spot, genuine live tweeting um, and how we respond. But at the end of the day, sometimes we'll hop on FaceTime after and he and he'll be like, hey, gotcha. And like, you know what I mean? And we'll joke. <laughs> we'll joke about it. Like having fun. This is what the locker room looks like. And that's why my biggest goal and my 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 manager told me to stop doing this, stop apologizing. But my biggest goal is please people don't think like I'm some arrogant prick that only <laughs> takes down his teammates and destroys them and never picks them up because I'm just as uplifting as I am, you know what I mean, in, in person as I am on Twitter. But it's just hard to do that sometimes because it's just not as funny when you're nice. <laughs> you could definitely tell that you have a, a great relationship, and that's awesome. I loved this week your tweet, um, you know, helping out those with COVID-19 to let us know what to do with those T-shirts. <laughs> and you helped me out, too, because now yeah. I know what to do with this. You can, you can literally do it. It's it's reasonable. <laughs> um, it's very, very soft. I don't know about the jersey, but that sweater was very, very soft, very light. <laughs> Compare it to like a Charmin Ultra. You know what I'm saying? With it, they didn't even sponsor me to say that or anything, but just, yeah, whatever. But the, uh, at the end of the day, though, I will say this too. He tweeted that. I don't know if you guys saw, but you can fact check me. He And then you can post this too. He tweeted that seven or eight hours after. Now, I understand people are working out. I understand we're in the off season. Maybe he might have been throwing. I don't know. I don't think he's been throwing for about eight hours. But it takes him a, a long, long time to respond. So I'm thinking either one, he's used his quarterback money. Uh, wait, he was a backup. He doesn't have quarterback money yet. <laughs> like that. Used his quarterback money to, to pay for somebody to respond to these tweets because they are pretty funny. But he ain't that witty in real life, bro. <laughs> so we need to put – we at least need to put like a, 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 a time limit, you know what I mean, on, on – how long it takes to respond because he, he comes up with some great responses. Just it takes him half of a day to figure out what he's going to say. Oh yeah. You've got to, you've got to craft that perfect response and that perfect comeback. But uh, we, we all see that you are just a good fun loving guy. We actually um, on a podcast right after the season ended, we were, at, we were just one of these silly questions of, Actually, Brian asked the question. We had to pick a Steelers player, one to go to Vegas and one to go to Disney World. And you were my choice Thank you. to go to Las Vegas. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you. So, well, because, well, let's just say this. You've got me by a couple inches. I've got, got you. you by a couple pounds. Got you. Because uh, I'm a pretty big guy. Well, and we're, I not, we're not, we're not co-partnering on the uh, – we're not we're not wingman in a, a roller coaster next to each other is what you're saying. <laughs> no, yeah, but no, I, I don't see that happening. Separate but, rows. But uh, what, what would your kind of if two big guys hanging out? What what would your what would your plan be for that Vegas trip? Oh, in Vegas? Yeah. Oh, brother, are you married? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> And I'll tell I you, have three I'll tell you off air later. Okay. Okay. That's, you know what? That's good. <laughs> I'm horning in on that trip because. <laughs> okay. What are the, what, what's the term? What, it, 
win in Vegas. What what happens, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So right. we'll. Uh, I mean, I I could always go count some cards for you yeah. and and I maybe mean, give maybe add add to that salary right, that they need to pay me you next I year. Can just say it right here on the air. We can just go ahead. <laughs> Ruin your perfect marriage. Remember Zach, the home wrecker. That's <laughs> oh, that's good. That's great. Well, you know, I, the other tweet this week with uh, all the women winking at you at the stands <laughs> <laughs> was great. So I'm coming to Vegas with you. you and I've got to, some great 2 a.m. stories. With the yeah. USC jersey, too, by the way. You got to bring the USC jersey. Back. I, you got it. I, I got to change it to 73. Absolutely. But, uh, Look at you. We'll I'm work so on that. I'm mad about and Ramon. I'm saying it live, <laughs> the first time live. I am so pissed that I didn't time up the timing of getting here and Ramon Foster's retirement because everybody knows me as 72 now, so there's no switching the number. Yeah. But damn, did that piss me off, right? <laughs> <laughs> I used to, you used to, you, you know, you guys know Moan. Like Moan pokes, he'll 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 poke you with a joke or everyone's, and he'll look at me and he'd be like, "Hey, the real 73 is talking." Be quiet, <laughs> bro. Mm, makes me so mad. Now he he's become a reporter in the city now too. How do you think he's going to do with that job? Dude, he's 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 awesome. First of all, you're talking about a guy who takes his job so seriously. Like he literally would have his iPad watching film as we have our pads on, getting ready to go warm up. So somebody who takes it so seriously that transition into what you guys do into this, into writing. And I just think with somebody with that type of work ethic and that type of NFL experience that he had, was it 11 years? Was it 11 or 12? I don't want to take one away. I think it was 11. I think we'll say 11, but just if I'm wrong, correct me later. But he, uh, with that type of experience, man, and as smart and as cool and as like just articulate as he is, it's going to transition to, well, I personally would be scared writing. Like, like when I'm done, I want to obviously go into broadcast radio, possibly podcast, things like that. But when it comes to like, you know, grammar and spell check and stuff like that, that stuff scares me, intimidates me. <laughs> I, prob I probably will. Um, I'm joking, but like at the end of the day, I'm, I couldn't be more proud. And, and he's, he's one of those type of guys that just, I, I expect nothing but greatness. I mean, he's already done a good job. I've checked out some of his stuff. Well, you know, I am the podcast director here, and so you've got a job if you want it. Just <laughs> let me know. Thanks, brother. We don't have to fire Dave yet, but I'll let you know when we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here, I'm technically on the editor of the entire website, yeah, so I, I get to decide who gets to be fired. Yeah, right do. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I have one quick question. We're going to open it up for a couple in the live chat here because I know you, you don't have a lot of time. You might be able to see it behind me. You a Star Wars fan at all? Are you kidding me? If I could right now, if my place wasn't so dirty, I have every single movie poster upstairs. So I, what I, 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 I want to know what, what you what you think of my helmet that I wear to games. I think so. Who painted it? Because I don't. I did. You did. Okay. You got. You can't be so blocky on the face, like where the where the where it seems <laughs> a little blocky. But you you wanted to emphasize the yellow. I see what it is, and I appreciate that. Other, that's. That's, That's the official stripe that yeah, I got no, from that, the helmet. Let me, Dave, let me compliment you, okay? Okay. <laughs> now, I started off with a con. Now, let me finish off with a pro. The rest of the helmet looks badass. You did a great yeah. job. Well, I had to take what, one that would actually fit my enormous yeah. melon and then just paint it from there. So I was. You have the same issue shopping, so <laughs> whatever you want. And, and, and that's why I want to know this. We've yeah. seen you more recently. We saw it back in Christmas. You were out around town. You just had the on Instagram with with Devin Bush with the Steelers onesie. Yeah. Where I need one. I I, uh, I have I need so many X's that dude, I can't get anything. But if I mean, it wasn't live. I'd tell you right now that I I would send you one, but I can't because so many people are so. <laughs> I don't know why Steelers Steelers shop needs to be like better at communicating what's in stock because I'm literally teasing the heck out of all these fans with all this stuff. And they're like, Oh yeah, we're going to have, we're going to be in stock soon. Don't worry. So I can't help you there. <laughs> I, I, hey, I just thought I'd ask. So yeah, I got you. You know what, Zach, um, Dave is in the uh, closed end zone of oh, great seats. So you could see that Kylo Ren Jersey. So yeah. I mean that helmet. So that helmet, I'm excited about it. So oh. make sure to look for him. Now I got to ask you a real question. I'm on the head, Dave, I got you. What's up, Brian? I got to <laughs> ask you a question. You know, I have a pair of, I'm famous for having a pair of BJ Finney's old pants. 
Oh man. And how are these so small? Because I'm 270 yeah. Yeah. and they don't fit me. Vinny is definitely, an, uh, and he knows this too. He's definitely from the waist high. That's where he carries all his weight. Below, he looks like a like a quarterback. No homo. You know what I mean? I'm not even going to like hide <laughs> that at, at all. Like the dude is slim. You know what I mean? He's super slim uh, in the lowers and stuff like that. So uh, outside of that, well, I was actually going to say, was it sweaty? Because he had the biggest sweat problem. I'm telling you, you might want to sanitize that COVID-19 type crap uh, about three three or four more times. Because, man, that is the sweatiest crotch you could have in your hand right now. Great. I've worn <laughs> him a few times. Have <laughs> you worn him? Like, yeah. I've, I've seen him wear the pants. pants. I've worn him to games. They're very uncomfortable because they're too small. So next time there's a handy hand me down situation, let me know. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we we did What's get up, one uh, one super chat question that came in here in the live chat where oh, Brian and I are both clicking on it at the same time. Uh, go ahead, take it away, Brian. So Dave Shipley asked, "Does Ben prefer pass protectors over run blockers at the tackle position, or is that just his imagination?" Uh, I mean, that's uh, Dave. I appreciate the question, but come on, that's that's uh, you, it's an NFL quarterback. He, of course, they like pass protectors <laughs> before run blockers because we want to throw 80, 80 times a game if it was up to him. <laughs> Daniel asks, hi, Zach. Thank you so much for your time. I would like to ask you, how do you perfect your kneel down blocking technique? Love you, bro. Keep on your great sense of humor. Dan, I appreciate the question. Um, honestly, man, that was improv. The first, well, I promise you the first two games I did it. Well, the first game I did it, I was serious. I was our, our, our uh, O-line coach. He definitely, he definitely holds me to the standard every single time of making sure like, you know, technique and being focused and not being goofy on the field and things like that. So the first time I did it, I think it was Monday night football against the Bengals. Right. Um, that was natural. That I was 100 percent. I'm making sure I don't mess this up, blah, 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 because this is like our first victory formation of the season. And so then when we were watching Tate. Like pouncing those guys. Like usually, we when we get to the, the victory coaches, like okay, cool, we're watching film on uh on Wednesday. It's like oh, cool, cool, get out of here. See you guys tomorrow. But he was like, hold on, I need to I need to watch this real quick. And they highlighted me, and then it was a joke. So I was like, you know what? Fine, you guys want to be jerks? I'm gonna do it every single game. So there you go. Dan. <laughs> Answer your question. Okay, one last question. This is from Big Bro Sco, which is brother. Dave's brother. <laughs> gotcha. He also does our Tuesday night stat geek podcast along with dave so zach during practice who's the guy you hate to be lined up against man in practice just because me and him have been hitting each other as hard as we can and trying to beat each other embarrass each other since we played each other the first time in college is tj every time we line up against each other it's personal as a matter of fact fun fact uh ramon literally watched me during camp uh, we it's like our first day having pads, so we're doing one on one pass rush, and you know the vets they don't they don't ever practice hard anyway, so they're out, uh, and uh, and uh, they'll enjoy that and uh, line up against PJ, and I give my best rep, and then Coach T he's like, okay, I like it, you know he's the biggest hype man, again second best rep. I came off the field and Moan looked at me and said, play like you do against TJ with everybody. So to answer your question, just because I respect him, he brings out a new three or four moves. I mean, the dude studies the game so much. He watches film. There's a reason why he's one of the top rushers in the league, uh, if not the best. Should have won Defensive Player of the Year last year, in my opinion. Yes. Um, everybody knows that and everybody believes that. So politics are politics. But at the end of the day, much respect to that guy. We've actually gotten closer, you know, just the fact that I've been elevating my game. Because here, here's the thing, man. In the NFL, it's all about respect. Guys don't want to get to know you. Guys don't want to ask you what's happening at home unless you're taking care of what's on the field. And at first you might think that that's like something like uh, things. <laughs> it's funny. That's hilarious. So we just got cut off by uh, Selfish Lance who had some books. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lance probably, is one of our other podcasts. Probably, probably when you think of Cal Berkeley, I'm just going to say this real quick. Since you know, <laughs> when you think of Cal Berkeley, you think of IPAs. Uh, naked bike runs because not only in Oregon, but also in the Bay Area, super liberal, obviously, and they, they, they like to protest in their own unique way. So they literally go on naked bike runs and 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 things like that. And you think of like an awesome festival in 420. That's that's pretty much the best thing they got going for them as a school. So appreciate you, Lance, for interrupting us. 
<laughs> well, Zach, I, I know you're running short on time, so we would like to give you, is there anything that you would like to say to Steeler Nation? Anything you want to say about the about the upcoming season, about you know the current events going on in our world? Anything that you would like to say just to just to finish up here that you would I think like everybody to you know take, knows my standpoint about you know COVID nineteen. Please make sure you're staying safe and things like that. And they also know my standpoint on Black Lives Matter and things like we need to keep creating awareness and initiating change and talking about change towards legislation to those who are in office. And uh, at the end of the day, I'm really excited about it, Steeler Nation. I'm really excited about the season. Um, you, you see a lot of stuff on Twitter, but, you know, like I've said before, uh, when the lights come on and we're on the field, it's that's 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 when you get the 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 quiet, believe it or not, quiet and focused and ready to smash Zach Banner. So um very, very excited about the season, and let's just make sure Lance doesn't have access to our next interview. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see Lance with me on Sundays in the Homer and the Hater show. <laughs> and, Guess and which one Lance is. is <laughs> Lance is the hater, in case you're wondering. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but uh, Michael, you want to send him out, send him out here? No, well, Zach, thanks for coming on today. Appreciate all the time. Uh, I would say I'd love to go up against you in the Oklahoma drill again, but uh, you'd kill me, so I'm not, <laughs> not going to say that. But, uh, again, thank you for the time. God bless you guys. Thank you guys for having me. All right. Thank you very much, Zach. All right. Well, we have a few extra minutes here that we could keep rolling now that we've got now, – now that Zach's – had to go on to do some other things. I know he was having a meet up with his brother and everything. And, uh, Oh, I, I got to bring this up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey, for, for, for showing that out there. Um, yeah. Lance is on the radar now. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Uh, Michael, you want to give your, your, your impressions here of our, of our time with Zach? Yeah, I'll, I'll be really quick. Cause my break's nearing the end, but, uh, <laughs> what, what a great guy. You know, just, take the time out he, he's hilarious um, totally someone i'm going to pull for for uh, heading into next season so just just an outstanding player and such a good guy yeah i, I completely agree we knew this was going to be a lot of fun you could you can just tell by him on the field anytime you see him do activities with the steelers we didn't get to mention the flash dance did we brian no we didn't yeah. um <laughs> there was so much to talk about and he was so great with his answers that uh, time just flew. I could have talked to him for two hours. It did not feel like work at all to me. In fact, let me put my fanboy hat on. That was awesome. I mean, just, I mean he great to talk about, talk to, and he's the kind of guy that he'll see your Kylo Ren helmet and he'll point you out. As, <laughs> yeah, he might game, look for I mean, me. He's he's that kind of guy. So you know, just just awesome. Uh, yeah, that was uh, that was just a whole lot of fun. That's what you expect from Zach Banner. Is he just seems like. Life is fun for him. He's. I really think that his whole experience between the Colts and the Browns really shaped him to be. If you know, let, let's say the Colts would have would have slid him on to the very bottom of the roster to to, to start and would have had a little you know a little bit of faith in that he was going to drop the weight. I don't know that he would be competing for a starting job right now. Um, just it's just amazing how one. Sometimes your your biggest setback ends up being your biggest asset, and I really think that that he's he's really like you said in the past. He found his love for football again in Pittsburgh. He loves it here. He likes it. He's betting on himself that he can come out and 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 do what he can do. I know Michael, you've got to get going. Great job setting everything up here with um, reaching out and 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 getting somebody. And uh, anything you want to say here before we sign off? Oh, uh, thanks for joining in, guys, uh, middle of the day. So I, I appreciate everyone uh, coming in and uh, checking it out. And again, shout out, shout out Zach. Uh, yeah, that was that that was just great. I mean, we should we should see about he could do a weekly spot anytime he wants to. <laughs> yeah, right? I know. He yeah, he could take on. over for all of us. Yeah, he's that. That's just um, actually that might be the new Homer and the Hater. If he wasn't busy <laughs> on Sundays. He could can you imagine Zach and Lance just going at it every week? And oh, that would be good, you know, talking about. I mean, seriously, um, you're not gonna mess with the USC like that. So um, <laughs> uh the but that that was really great. Uh, Michael, you go ahead and you you get back to your work day while Brian and I uh uh finish up here at the end with great um, job, Michael. Have a good Brian. one, guys. Yeah, you too. 
Brian, you want to do the rundown for us? What do we have coming up? So lots of great things coming up today. In just a couple of hours, you're going to have Lance Williams. And yeah, I said it. And I think this is going to be one of the most fantastic. Yeah, I said it's um, just for the fact that this is a great topic that he has coming up. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you the topic right now. It's yeah, I said it. The Steelers Super Bowl window is bigger than you think it is. And I can't wait to hear that because I want to know why it's bigger and I'm excited that it's bigger. So check that out today. Then tomorrow, Tony Defio, it's Steelers brunch with Tony. And that comes right around the new, the 12 o'clock hour, right around Eastern standard time. So right around then on Sunday, you have the Homer and the hater with Lance Williams and myself. I'm back on Monday. It's the, uh, it's the uh, Steeler Q and a, with Tony Defio, and we're thinking about doing some memories afterwards, maybe a double show. So maybe another show. That's uh, something we are kicking around, and it looks like it's it's going to be happening. Tuesday night, it's the Stat Geeks. Once again, Dave Schofield and Big Bro Sco. Um, really, if you want, if you like stats, you like it, you know, breaking it down. <laughs> Sorry. Lance, Lance awesome. Williams interrupts us to, to say uh, <laughs> the window's bigger because Ben's hands are bigger than Joe Burrow's. <laughs> That's awesome. <And> then, <laughs> but, you know, so the stat geeks break it down um, best way possible. Uh, some of the best analysis you're going to listen to. Then uh, Lance Williams and the standard with the standard is the standard. Um, along with Michael, I believe once again on Wednesday night. Then on Thursday, it's the Steeler preview with Dave Bad myself and uh michael back so with See, that, that being sounds said, like four people when you say bad and myself yeah, because oh, bad myself we, yeah. we, we never know if we're getting bad or mr 2 a.m so, yeah it's, it's but, I, I tell you what i bet you i bet you zach could rival me with 2 a.m stories oh i'm so, sure he could but uh he said it would have to be off air remember yeah remember could, that. You could you imagine could you imagine the damages that that zach and i would do in vegas oh my goodness i i i i I, I, I can't even wrap my brain around that. That would, that would be something crazy. That would make for quite an after party, after, after, after party. So also, we are going to continue to try to bring you some of these special shows. Whenever we can get them, we will have them. We'll try to announce them as, as fast as we can um, to, to get it out there for you. But a lot of times, like with Zach, that just kind of happened kind of quickly that he was ready to come on. But uh, fantastic guy. Great interview. If you didn't see it from the beginning, make sure you go and check it out. Also, make sure you're checking out BehindTheSteelCurtain.com. It is your one-shop stop for all things Pittsburgh Steelers. And we, we'll continue to have stuff on there. We'll have some stuff about the interview. Plenty of stuff. Plenty of content still coming out, even though it's June and in the dead season. But um, Brian, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Zach Banner and Shuk Sakura for that's going to be a battle. But I love the fact that those guys are our best buddies and they they drive they drive one another to success. So that's going to be success for that right tackle position. And that makes me really feel good about the future too. I would love to see both of those guys succeed. And I love how he said that, hey, we'll both be in the lineup. It's just who's who's starting. Who's where? And who's where. So it, yeah, fantastic. But as far as interviews go, that guy could talk forever. And he's awesome. You just hang on every word. He's such a fun guy. Absolutely. I I feel he says it, you know, radio, podcasting, TV, I, completely. I could totally see that. You know, not, I'm sure he could really do the serious breakdown uh, and analyzing the stuff, but that's not his wheelhouse, man. His wheelhouse is, is just good, fun content. Uh, and it was great. Make sure, like I said, if you weren't already in love with Zach Banner before, go back and, and make sure you double check this from the beginning because uh, he just gave you plenty of reasons to fall in love with him and, and to be your, your favorite Pittsburgh Steelers. So with that, I think it's time to, to call it a show here because it won't be too long. Uh, sometime here, we'll make sure we, we get a message out on Twitter of Lance will be running his show later on today. So as we say, thanks for joining us. Tune in, tell a friend, and subscribe. We'll see you all next time.